You shine brighter than any star in the sky Your light shining through the dark of the night Jesus forever, I find all that I am in your love, love, love I find freedom in the light of your love, everlasting. You are more than enough, Jesus, forever. I find all that I am in your love, love, love. Let the music play, hear us praise your name. See the darkness fade, dance the night away. We have found the Every sunrise over my head Every breath inside of my lungs Every heart beat inside of my chest mm, It's proof of your unfailing love mm -mm. Sing it out, sing it out right now, sing it out right now There's no other
Good morning, friends, and welcome back to Wake Up and Worship. If you've been with us all week, you know that we are looking at how we can trust God's plan is best. There are a lot of reasons for this, but we saw three big reasons in Jonah's story this weekend. If you were with us then, we saw how Jonah didn't want to follow God's plan. He had his own plan and thought it would be better. It turns out he's totally wrong, of course, and God brings this huge storm out of the middle of nowhere while Jonah is on a boat heading away from where God told him to go. Through that storm, we saw that God is all powerful, that there's nothing that God can't do. There's actually a big word for this. It's called omnipotent. Can you say that with me? Omnipotent? Yeah, omnipotent. If you don't remember that, that's okay. It just means all powerful. There's no end to God's power or strength. There's nothing that God can't do. We see this all over the Bible, but there's a story that I really like that I think shows this really well because God does something impossible, but it's not impossible because he's God. And so we're going to head to the Old Testament, to the book of Joshua. You might remember who Joshua is. He takes over leading God's people after Moses. And so Joshua is leading God's people. And we know the story of Joshua and Jericho, where they're supposed to go into the city, but it's surrounded by these huge walls and they can't go in. And so God makes the walls fall down with nobody even touching them as they march around the city. Now that's really incredible and it shows God's power. But what he does next is even more amazing to me. And so it says that when this happens, all of the surrounding cities see it. And there's this itty bitty tiny city called Gibeon. They watch and they realize that if God decides to come against them with Israel, there's nothing that they can do. They're smaller than Jericho and they'll surely be defeated. So they decide to become partners with Israel, that they're gonna like be on the same team. Well, some other cities decide the opposite. They decide that they'll become partners and work together to destroy Israel and Gibbon, Gibeon. And so the Bible tells us that there are these five Amorite kings, these five different cities that all decide they're going to work together to defeat Israel and Gibeon. And Gibeon cries out and they're like, don't abandon us. Come at once, save us, help us. And so Joshua takes the Israelite army to go defend against these five kings and protect Gibeon and all of God's people. And so Joshua is there and it's kind of really terrifying. It ends up being like seven versus two, like Gibeon, the small little place in their army, and the Israelite army against all these other cities and their armies that are way bigger. Joshua's a little bit afraid, but God tells him not to be afraid. He says, I have given you victory over them. Not a single one of them will be able to stand up against you. That's pretty cool. So God tells him going into the fight, that he's the one that is going to give them victory or the ability to win. They're going to win because of God's power. So along the way, Joshua goes city by city fighting against these armies. It says that he sees some success. Things are going well. Uh, God causes confusion to come over one army. And so Joshua is able to go in and attack, no problem. Then he heads to the next one and God sends this big hailstorm and Joshua and the Israelites are able to go in and wipe them out. So God's on their side, but he's going like place to place fighting army against army and there's just not enough time. So the Bible tells us that Joshua calls out to God and he asks him this in Joshua 10, uh, verse 12, Joshua prayed to the Lord in front of all the people of Israel, and he said, so he prays, he knows, like, this is impossible, I need to ask God for help. He says, let the sun stand still over Gibeon, and the moon over the valley of Ajalon. So Joshua asks God to hold the sun still. <laughs> you might be wondering, why is that? That makes no sense at all. He's basically asking God to make time stand still or make the day last longer. There is more to do and not enough time. He's running out of time to fight, out, fight against all of these armies. So Joshua goes to God and asks him to do something impossible. Make time stand still. Don't let the sun move because the sun moves as the time goes on. So he says, pause, let us have more time. And so God does what would be impossible for any of us but it's not impossible for him because he's God and he's all powerful or omnipotent. It says, so the sun stood still and the moon stayed in place until the nation of Israel had defeated its 
enemies. That is so cool. God shows just how powerful he is by holding back the sun and the moon so that time will just last a little bit longer. The day won't end and Israel can defeat all of the armies through God's power. God is all powerful. There's nothing that God can't do. So sometimes we look at his plan and we think like, I don't want to do that. It's too hard. I don't want to do that. It's impossible. But God reminds us that all things are possible through him. There's nothing that God can't do. And so one of the reasons that you can trust God's plan is best is because he's all powerful. Now Jonah saw that God being all powerful means he needs to follow God's plan because if he goes his own way, then he's working against God's power. And that's not a place you want to be. So instead, choose to be like Joshua on the right side of God's power because God is going to use that to make his plan happen in your life. Because if you're following his ways, then you're doing what he wants you to do. And remember, we saw that God causes the plans of that person to succeed or to happen. And so you can trust that God's plan is best because he's all powerful. There is nothing that God can't do. We'll look at another reason why you can trust God's plan tomorrow. I'll see you then at 945.